Do you have solo economic dependency? That is, if you aren't working, you aren't making money. The Art of Passive Income Podcast is the solution. Discover passive income models so you can enjoy life on your own terms. Let freedom ring. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky here, and this week's Best of Roundtable compilation theme. Again, thanks so much to Rossi, our chief problem solver for creating this series and switching it up. A little bit of Kaizen, continuous improvement. But the theme is for these next two podcasts are going to be the mindset focus. And how do we handle the inevitable dips? And what's the right mindset when we're going to venture into something new? So please enjoy these podcast compilations. And we're going to see everyone live next week. Thanks so much. So I wanted to have as a discussion, how do we mentally mind the inevitable dips when they hit us in our businesses, in our life? And let's just start with you, Mike Zeno. Okay. So I think the first thing to realize is that, um, that they're going to happen. And I think that having a community of people that are telling you that there are definitely going to be times in this business model where there are going to be dips. Dips, I mean, what is a defined dip? I guess maybe you're having a lackluster mailer, or maybe you're not getting the response you thought with your advertising, or any of these things along the way with the land investing. Just knowing that they're there is good, but I guess it may not totally prepare you for when it happens, right? It's sort of like when it happens, you're in the middle of it. And, and I would say one thing that I would do and I do do is just to go back to the processes that I know are going to bring results. It's time to double down. Like the time, if you're not getting a a great amount of, uh, if you're not getting really good results with the mailing, then it's not time to stop mailing. It's time to examine where you've been mailing, the price point, uh, what's the market telling you about the lack of responses and so on and so forth. And it's time to actually double down on mailing. I think this could be similar to what's that bookmark? The obstacle is the way. I think we probably yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Ryan Holiday, the, the obstacle yeah. is the way. So look at if you're having a lackluster result in your mailing, it's certainly not the time to say, well, I guess I'm just going to dial down my mailings because that further complicates the problem. And now you have less uh, people uh, responding. And then slowly you're going to dial yourself out of the business model because you're just going to slowly believe that it doesn't work when in fact listen if i we're making it work all of us here so this works so we're living proof that this business works so what you need to do is use that sort of mentality the obstacle is the way you need to double down on that like why is it not working are you are your is your pricing off um or whatever is your data or something i don't know whatever it is just double down and and send out more mailers like to me that's the way so i would say whatever problem you're having you know dig into it double down on it and execute at a higher level with it and that's how you would overcome that dip because we've seen this from time and time again on the sell side people are like oh i've been marketing this property and i've been talking to these tire kickers asking me it's available is it available over and over again and, and then all of a sudden in week like four or five after we talked to them they like sold four properties in a week and it's like they really didn't sell four properties in a week. They sold four properties over the period of time that they were advertising. It just came to fruition in that week. But had they given up three or four weeks ago, said, I can't talk to another person who says, is this available? Then they would never have had that joy of three to four sales in a week. So you're just going to double down on what the problem is, in my opinion. No, that's a really good point. I mean, what, what did Matt Forbes do? It was like 19 properties or something. Yeah, it was a crazy amount um, of properties in a few days. And, you know, uh, that's to me, and it's a result of consistent marketing, consistently putting yourself out there. Um, we know that marketing and it's like a parade. And like I was talking to someone today, and I was like, you know, those people that push those carts, Mark, I don't know why they don't do it where you guys are, but they have like the balloons and all those overly priced things at the parades that you know that are like fifteen dollars for this five dollar you know five cent balloon and they push around well if they would have walked five feet and say nobody's buying these things no you're gonna gonna walk all the way down to that side of the parade then you're gonna walk all the way back then you're gonna walk back down again then you're gonna walk all the way back and eventually you're gonna sell all of your products but if you just walk a couple of feet and put a couple ads out and be like 
nobody's buying this and then just give up. Well, uh, that's the problem. You're the problem. You're the problem is that you're not resilient enough. You don't have grit. Right. And Matt would be, you know, after a couple of drinks on nightcap, completely transparent about his struggles for that yes. week. And, yeah. and, but then he's, you know, on the other, but he, but his belief was so strong. He's like, you know, if Zeno can do this, I can do this. And he just wouldn't quit. And the next it's thing true. you know, he's, he's, you know, retiring Anne and um, he's almost going to replace yeah. his, his full-time job income uh, and passive income uh, at the very least pay for those, you know, 20 kids in their private education. So <laughs> let's go to Tate Litchfield. Tate, how do you mind the inevitable dip in your business or in your life? What, what do you do? How do you get out of it? Well, you have to recognize that you're in a dip, right? You have to recognize that things aren't going the way that you originally wanted. And you have to be willing to make changes. I think that dip the dip is not a one-time thing. It's not a one-time event in your business. It's going to happen not once, not twice, but as many times as you're in the business. And, and some people seem to go through dips <sighs> really, really, uh, like in a reoccurring order, it's like every other month, man, they're getting hit. But um, if you've ever read the book, uh, The Dip by Seth Godin, he has a, a, a challenge in it. And it says, write it down, write down under what circumstances you're willing to quit and and then stick with it. So if you sit down and you're building a, a business or an empire, so to speak, you should know why you would quit. And it can't be, oh, I couldn't sell this first property or my mailing didn't turn out the way I wanted it to or I overpaid. You have to have a really solid reason. So I think that the dip is what, you know, separates the boys from the men. You know, you got to push through it. And everybody on this call has been in a dip or is likely going through a dip right now. I mean, I'm in a little bit of a dip. I can't seem to buy my properties like I want. So I'm having to make adjustments. Um, but I'm listening to the market and I'm listening to uh, the, the response I'm getting. And because I can't buy land at the same price I did last year this time, doesn't mean that I can quit the business. It doesn't mean I can stop mailing. It just means, means I have to pivot. So uh, the one thing you don't want to do is just lose, lose hope or lose faith. And uh, you have to know that these things are part of growth. And if you don't go through this process, you will likely never reap the reward, rewards of passive income. Yeah, absolutely. Mimi Schmidt, the terrorist hunter. When it's you funny. go through a dip, how do, how do you how do you mind your dips? It's funny that Mike brought up that um, the office out not office hours, but the what's it called? Obstacle is the way. No, your what is your nighttime show? Night, nightcap. Night nightcap. So you're on nightcap and you're talking about Matt Forbes. Well, Chad Swanson and his wife are listening in and they had been in a dip. They are international flight school students of mine and they've had a coaching session with me and just couldn't make anything happen and sold. Then they sold nine properties in two weeks and they showed up on nightcap and they were so excited that they had nine properties in two weeks. And then they heard Matt Forbes said he sold like 19 or 24 and they felt bad, but they're international flight school, school students and they sold nine properties. And I explained the same thing to them. It wasn't that you did anything different. It was that momentum that you built through your consistency. So I was really excited for them. But personally, I think 2020 has been an, <laughs> a dip for me. <laughs> but um, and uh, uh, Scott and Mark you used to talk about doing this, but you don't talk about it any much anymore in the morning, writing out your goals for the day. And then at night checking, I've been doing that a lot. I have a gratitude journal. So there's lots of different ways, that, you know, forms that you can use to do it. But if I write out my, the biggest priorities that I need to accomplish that day, and then I review it before I go to sleep, then it's this wonderful reminder of what I actually accomplished. And um, it makes me feel like I'm really, I am getting things done. Otherwise, I don't, you just don't realize all the little stuff that you do accomplish. And that's been helping me get through my 2020 dip. No, no, I, I, I love that. I love that. Um, and you know what? For a lot of people, 2020 in COVID is just a perpetual dip. And, um, but I love, I love the fact that you, you lead with gratitude and you look at what, what you do have. And there's so many things to be grateful for. And then to write down, you know, those goals and see what you've accomplished. We all love 
you know, checking off the box. And it feels so good to go to bed with that exactly. sense of accomplishment. That's, right. a, that's a really elegant way mm -hmm. to mind the dips. Um, speaking of elegance, the Mr. Fix-It himself, the technician, Eric Peterson, um, I assume you have dips. I don't know, but everyone does. So how do you mind the dips, Eric? Listen, I think that, you know, dips, they could come from outside sources or they could come from inside sources. In other words, you know, like we can create our own dips by, by not spending the time needed on the business or, you know, the market might force a dip on us because sales are slower, acquisitions are slower, this or that. But ultimately, um, kind of like everybody's been saying, you know, I think that, um, the way to, to kind of come through the dip and make it out the other side um, is really about routine and habits. Um, and that's why so often we talk about the importance of developing those habits and routines in your business, whether you theme your days uh, for the week or you, you know, spend a certain amount of time per day on the business or whatever it is. But the bottom line is that you keep doing it no matter what the circumstance. Um, if you're discouraged because you're not getting sales, you've got to continue to put those ads out anyways, you know, and at the same time, you should be diagnosing what could be going wrong here. Am I advertising in the wrong market? Is my pricing wrong? Um, you know, and continue to ask yourself those questions along the way, but you've got to keep going and keep making progress and following through or, you know, you might as well turn in the keys and, and go find something else to do because if you're not putting in the work, you're not going to see the results. So, and you know, it's especially people getting started, they've got oftentimes full-time jobs doing something else. And those might be big jobs. They might be small jobs, but those external forces can cause us to have dips in our business too. I mean, if you get really busy with a project or a deadline, whatever, in your real job, it becomes hard to find the time to spend that one to two hours a day on this business. So you've got to find a way that you can still accomplish those things. Maybe have a little grace from time to time when, when you've got a you know really busy week, what have you. But the bottom line is, if you're not putting in the work, there, there will be no result. I love it. I love that you brought up grace as well. Um, we're Peloton riders and, you know, some of these instructors are great. And I'm on the Peloton the other day and, and Dennis Morton said a great quote. He said, pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. And the suffering is in our heads, right? We're all going to go through pain. Nobody rides life for free. It's how we handle it. It's what we do with it is, are we going to suffer with it or not? And to have some grace for yourself, give yourself a break. You're not suffering. Then you're just going through the dip and you're getting yourself out of it. You're not adding any more to it than need be. Um, and you're taking those steps that needs to be take that need to be taken to get out of it. Um, Scott Todd, I don't even know if you've even ever been in a dip, but I'll assume you have. But uh, how do you mind your dips? Well, okay, yeah, I've been in a dip many times. It's no no different. And uh, it's just that you just keep going, right? Um, you, you know, Mark, re recently, uh, I don't know, the last few weeks, I, um, I went in the garage and I picked up my golf clubs that I hadn't been swinging for a while and decided I'm going to go play golf. And so I go out there and I used to play golf all the time and I was better at it than than I was I am today because I haven't played at all right so it's like refinding your swing and remembering things and I went out and bought a new set of golf clubs and I did all this stuff and it and and basically as as we're talking about the dips here I just go through and I start to think like okay look if I was playing golf and I was doing really good and then all of a sudden I started being terrible at it well what would I do well I would go back to the basics and the foundation right so like if I I was going through the motions and I wasn't getting the results I would want. I would go through the foundations. I would, 
I would look at my swing. Okay, is am I doing something wrong with my swing? I would go to the easy shots. What's an easy shot? Like a chip shot, for example, or a half swing. I would go to an easier club to hit, like a wedge or a seven iron. I would go to something simple. Okay. Well, how how do I go back to the foundation of this business? And it's already been discussed a little bit. Is my pricing right? Okay. If I'm if I'm if I'm in a dip for buying, do I have the pricing right? If I don't, well, then I need to tweak it and I need to start tweaking things. I need to start making slight adjustments and just monitoring the results. I don't need to be in a race. Too many times people are in a hurry to like get the result. And so if, if you just do it and make a tweak and just see what happens, it's a lot like fishing, change your, your bait a little bit and just see, does this make a difference? Maybe I need to change the fishing line color. Does that make a difference? Maybe I need to cast out further. Does that make a difference? Maybe I need to pick up the boat and move it to another spot because maybe this spot just sucks. Okay. So like I can do all that stuff, but in our business, for example, if you're struggling with getting land and that's your struggle, we'll go back to the basic. What's the basic? Well, you can look at your pricing or you can do something even more simpler than that. You can go and buy a property wholesale, right? Like the mailing side, you can augment that with wholesale on the sales side. You can also augment it with wholesaling. So if you have a property and you're struggling to sell it, you bought the property, but you're like, I can't find the market for this. We'll go sell it wholesale. One of my favorite stories to talk about selling wholesale was I bought this property and it was a one acre property. And you, you, Mark, were selling properties in this similar area for a quarter acre. And Basically, I'm like, oh man, this one's gonna move and gonna be really, really good. And I got it at a good price. The only catch was that you were in one county and I was technically in another county. And the only thing that separated us was like literally one street. Okay, like you had properties on this side of the street, and I had property, a uh, property on this side of the street. Mine was an acre, yours was a quarter acre. I'm like, this is gonna be really good. This is gonna be a great property. I got a little little thing because Mark's not looking at the map. I got this. I struggled to sell the property. I couldn't sell this thing for anything. So I bought it for $3,000. One day I get a phone call. Hey, Scott, you got any property in this area? And I'm like, well, I do. I got it. You call me. You got any property in this area? I'm like, well, I do, Mark. So like, you're like, well, how much is it? I'm like, uh, 6,000. I'm like, I'm going to double my money. Yeah. And you're like, hold on, be right back. So you come back to me and you go, done, let's do the deal. I'm like, okay, you bought it for me for $6,000. I was so happy. I struggled to sell this property for like months, months. I was like giving up on it. Like, oh my God, here you come along and you buy it. I'm like, sucker. I asked you, like, did you, did you sell it? You're like, yeah, I sold it. I'm like, how much? You're like 18,000. Now who's a sucker, right? Not, not you. Okay. Did I care that you bought sold it for 18000 No way. Why? Because I was happy making my $6,000, getting my 3000 back. I doubled my money. Life is good. But see, that's the thing is when you're struggling with something, you just haven't found your voice. You haven't found the right niche. You haven't found the little tweaks that you need to make. Go back to the basics. That means you have to sell it wholesale, sell it wholesale. If you're struggling to buy and you need to, you need to get land, buy it wholesale. Then go through the process and then start to rebuild your confidence again and keep it going. It's all about what we talk about. Keep moving your feet. You got a problem? What are you doing about it? Yeah, no, I, I, I love that story. And, and there's not a boot camp that goes by where we don't say, you know, move your feet. And I love telling the story about that first boot camp you were in, Scott, and I was making fun of your website. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, I remember. And, you know, it was a beautiful website, but there was nothing about you. And right. you didn't wait. Like, you didn't go home. You didn't think about it. You didn't get a lighting kit. You didn't get a green screen. You went outside at the break and made a video and then put it up on the website in real time after the break. And I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, that's how you execute. Right. Um, and not, you know, not striving for perfection, just moving your feet and doing what needed to be done. Um and so I think there's there's really some great lessons here with minding the dips. I know for me, I use a combination of what everyone has done with minding the dips. 
Um, I love doing these fear setting exercises that Tim Ferriss talks about. I love, you know, looking at, you know, what I can be grateful for in my life. And then when the inevitable dips come, I like to just reframe it. Like, why did I think that life shouldn't give me challenges? Like, I'm like, yes. Like, a, like a, you know, like when Mike Zan was talking about the obstacles away, the Stoics would embrace it. Like, oh, look, the Stoic gods are giving me a test. How lucky am I to be tested now to see, you know, how strong is my grit? What's, what am I really made of? And, and embracing it. So you come out of the dip much quicker in that mindset. The worst thing you can do is commiserate and get a bunch of people and start complaining because now you're all in that hole together. And which is why, you know, I love, you know, the people that I'm surrounded by, you know, you're always the average of the five people you hang out with the most. No one's commiserating. Like no one's going to put up with, you know, like Zeno or Eric, Mimi, Scott, Tate. Like if I started complaining about something, none of them would tolerate it. They're like, seriously, really? You've lost all complaining privileges. And like, yeah, you're right. And um, there would be no commiserating for sure. Uh, they would they would just pull me out of that ditch and be like, okay, here's how you know let's let's do this. Um, and and it's and so and it's a great feeling knowing that. So Tate Litchfield, I'll give you the last word on this, on on mining the dips. You know, I think there's a lot of really good information that's been shared here. I think you've just got to decide that. If you're going to be good at anything, it's going to be hard. And once you have that mindset shift of, oh, this is fun. I'm doing this on the side. Uh, I really hate it when people call this a side hustle because in order to be successful at the land business, it can't be a side hustle. You've got to go into it with this attitude that this isn't for fun. It's not a hobby. I'm going to, you know. I'm taking names and cash and checks. Like that's my approach with it. I'm not here because uh, I want to make a good, you know, a ton of really good friends. I've made a lot of really good friends, but I'm here because I'm good at this and I'm here to better my life and the life of my family and friends and, and provide a really good property or product to my end consumer. So once you've kind of made that decision, the dips become a little bit less uh, excusable and you just kind of put your head down you say you know what everybody else I know is having success why well, can't I what do I need to adjust and so just have that uh, do whatever it takes attitude and I think anyone can be successful in this business but you just got to put your head down and embrace it sometime because you're not alone you're not the only person to deal with this struggle you know as coaches, we're here to help you with that. And, and we love helping people make the dips a little bit easier. But I can imagine that for people starting something like land investing, they can go either one of those two mindsets. And so I want to talk about it. Um, Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? Oh, wait, I'm sorry, Eric. I didn't want to start with you. We've had this talk. Scott Bossman, what are your thoughts? Ah. Uh... Well, I mean, I mean, for me, it's it's a few things, right? Um, usually, when I take on something new, I like to be excited about that thing. Uh, so your son's excited, obviously, um, and even though he's he's duffing it here and there, he's he's probably over swinging. He's he's missing here and there. There's obviously something about the game that excites him, and he's got a vision for the future to continue playing that game and maybe get better. That's how it was for me with land investing. So when I have my eyes on something like that, that speaks to me, uh, it's all about the action. It's all about the reps. It's all about the discipline and the frequency with which you apply yourself to those things. And, you know, you go out there every single day and it's going to go from duffing it and, you know, missing it to eventually connecting uh, uh, more regularly with it. And you're just going to get better and better. But to me, it's all about the action. It's all about showing up. And I think in our in this business, it's so much about that, right? We all get worried about losing money. Uh, I put all this money toward this piece of land. Uh, I talked to somebody the other day. They own 10 properties. They haven't sold any yet. Uh, but they've only been marketing them for like one week. And they were all nervous. And I'm like, you have to remember, you bought 10 properties at 25 cents on the dollar. Let's do the math here. 
you invested $10,000 in these properties, you are now sitting on a land portfolio worth $40,000 or more. So it's about perspective in that regard as well. But it's just about the actions. It's about taking the action and putting faith in those actions that it's going to produce the results down the way. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, how about you, Zen Master? Uh, well, if I think mindset, I guess probably what would come uh, to me right now is rhythm in our business. I've been talking to a lot of people that uh, I think what happens is when they first come in, they set the expectations too high. So I don't know uh, if that relates to the golf, like thinking you're going to like nail it every time and get it in. So they have these expectations. I mean, they hear stories too, because um, I think the magic is there. They hear about um, maybe they hear Scott Todd's story or your story or one of our stories and they hear about, you know, and so they set these expectations that they need to sell so much land, do so much. And I think that, I don't think, I know it leads some people to feeling a bit overwhelmed because they develop these very grand expectations. And I try to tell them, I said, really what I think is important in this business, the mindset you should have is to build a rhythm, a rhythm that can be maintained and then later on scaled. So this is why uh, it's, you know, it's common in the flight school to be taught 20 mailers a day. It's a rhythm. Why not send out a thousand? Well, that's not a very good rhythm, right? It's going to lead to things in the future that are going to be difficult to deal with. So when it comes to setting ads, people are like, well, I'm trying to set up like 10 Facebook accounts. I'm like, well, just start with one, build a rhythm, post an ad, a couple of days later, post another ad. Keep. So I think that our business does have all of these rhythms and i think the expectation you should have is to build a model that you can sort of uh, scale later but in the beginning just just get a rhythm you have your mailings going out click 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 right and then you're coming back in you're doing your due diligence right you're working the closing you're just going full cycle then when it comes to marketing you're putting an ad out you're putting another ad you develop a process maybe you go on and you uh, go into invest in ninjas and you get uh, Eric's uh, Airtable follow-up boss sort of process and you, and you build a rhythm. And maybe it's you doing all of the parts, but it's okay because you're developing a rhythm. So to me, the mindset, uh, my advice for people with, uh, in terms of our business would be to, um, you know, think about more in terms of developing a rhythm in a, in a slow pace, you know, and just, just go through, make sure the action get done. Because if you can do them, and you can define what those actions are. You can define what the deliverables are and what the positions are within the business that, you know, then you can build scale. So um, that's what I think. I think that I've, I've just encountered a few people, Mark, recently that they seem overwhelmed and I feel really bad. I talked to them. I'm like, listen, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. You're thinking that you have to do all of this, which is great. It'd be like, hey, I'm going to get up today and do an hour of Pilates, which I do love. And then I'm going to do an hour, a mile jog and then I'm going to ride the Peloton and like, Man, what a great day, right? But if you think you can maintain that rhythm every day or three days a week, it's highly unlikely you'll burn out. And so to prevent burnout in this business, develop a rhythm and something that's small and manageable and then grow it. No, I, I, I really, you know, agree with everything you've said. Um, Big Papa, Tate Litchfield, what are your thoughts? Mental fortitude is something that... Uh... You got to have, you got to have it to be good at, at just about anything in life, whether it's riding a bike, starting a business or learning golf, right? You got to be able to say, you know what, there's a reason somebody else is better than me at X thing. And that's because they've put in 10,000 hours worth of time to it, right? And if you expect to pick up a golf club, and I, I don't, I've never played golf a day in my life, so I don't even know what the right term and all it hit a hole in one on your first go. I think that's probably very unrealistic. Right. right. If I went fly fishing with you, right. and you catch a, you catch a fish every 10 casts or 20 casts. Who do I think I am that if I've never fly fished that I would catch anything? I mean, you got to pay your dues and, and it's no different than the land business, right? People come into this business and maybe this is partly our fault we talk about our success and how once your business is up and running how things just happen you just sell property you're just at lunch and it's like boom woohoo i got a down payment this happens and it happens honestly frequently for some of us and that's really cool but when we talk about it we make it seem like oh we didn't really do anything to achieve that or to earn that and that's not the case at all we've put in the hours we've come up with the systems we've done the homework We've done the hard part ahead of time 
so that when we are out at lunch and we do get that ding, 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 new property sold, it's almost an expectation, right? It's like, yes, of course we sold a piece of property. Why? Because I'm prepared, right? I showed up with a game plan. I've got a VA team. They're working. I pay them well. They do their job. So there's a lot of things you can overcomplicate in the business, right? And uh, it can be as simple as making your processes extremely in-depth, extremely complicated. And sometimes the easiest way to train somebody is simply jump on a phone call with them and say, look, here's how I want you to do things. Now, you can always outsource it and say, great, I want to outsource it. Now, I want to have a script read up, written up for this, et cetera, or Something else that a lot of people uh, get upset with or, or frustrated with is the offer letter. Yeah, absolutely. LG Pass allows you to edit your own offer letter. Do any of us have an edited offer letter? Probably not. Right? And mine's simple. The godfather of land told me this is the one to use, and that's the one I'm using. Mark, you haven't told me to change it, so I haven't changed it. It's my mental fortitude, right? It's like, okay, I'm following the process. So that's my, no. that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, no, it, it, it's so true. It's so true. Um, the technician, Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? Well, I think, um, you know, Mark, there's a, there's a short little quote that, that you often cite, and that is, uh, comparison is the thief of all happiness. And, and that's a lot of what I'm hearing as, as we're kind of talking about this idea of mindset. And, you know, I, I think a lot of us are going towards, um, new students coming into the business, uh, learning how to do this and, and maybe feeling like um, they can't do it or they haven't had the success that they anticipated as quickly as they anticipated or things of that nature. And I think that just comes down to this idea of comparison because if you go out in the community, you go to Facebook or you're listening to the podcast and, and like Tate was saying, you know, you hear about someone you know, selling a property on the beach or while they're at dinner or what have you. And, you know, you've got a couple properties in inventory and you've, you've had them for two months, three months, and, and you've been unable to sell them. And you start to look around and say, well, why is this not working for me? And I would go back to, um, I guess, you know, relating back to the golf thing. I mean, you can't go out and be a, a professional golfer, right? You could study books, you could, you know, watch videos, all this stuff, but without actual practice in real life, like you're probably not going to be any good. You know, one person might be a little better than another naturally, but you know, the likelihood of, of you being a professional is, is pretty much slim to none. Right. So it takes practice. You've got to go out there. You've got to do the reps as Mike was saying, you've got to send out your offers. You got to put your ads out there on, on Facebook, on Craigslist, on Landmoto. And you've got to reply to those and follow up with those people consistently because it doesn't just fall into your lap. Most of the time it takes work and effort and consistent work and effort. And, uh, you know, over time you can refine those efforts and processes in your, in your business and, and begin to remove yourself from some of that build systems delegate, et cetera, and, um, you know, really build a business, but it doesn't come overnight. It doesn't come by, you know, just going through the investor's toolkit and being like, all right, I'm a land investor. I'm going to go out and I don't know, sell a hundred properties this year or whatever. Like it takes work. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Scott Todd, what about you? What do you think? You, think? you know, there's a lot of good advice here, right? Um, but one of the things that always amazes me, and I'm going to go to golf for a minute, and then I'll come back to land. What amazes me is that when you're trying to do something, you want to learn how to play golf, no problem. You can look at this all day long. You can go to a golf professional, hire that golf professional to help you refine your swing. Like it's amazing. You go to, you go to somebody that this is their professional at this and guess what? They can tell you like that. Well, if you do this, then this is going to happen, right? Or this is why you're messing up or do this instead of that. And then you go to these golf professionals and you listen to them. And then you're like, that's a good idea. I'm going to start doing it. And then you leave their presence. And then you go to somebody that's 
on the golf course with you. Another, it'd be like me going to you, right? I hire a, I, I hire a golf professional to teach me how to play golf. And then you and I are out there on the golf course. And guess what? Let's just say that you have a better shot than me on this one. I go, wait a minute. How did you do that? And then you start telling me how you did it. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm going to try to do it like he did it. And I'm going to ignore what the what the professional told me to do. Right. And we see this happen a lot, too. And what I mean by that is we we like there's people here that, that do this full time. There are people here that, that this is their full time living. Like right? this is us on this call. And there's others. And if you're going to take advice from somebody, well, then you better take advice from people that actually know what they're doing and not some high handicapper that's worse than you are or want to be like you are. And this happens a lot on the Internet. Go, 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 go figure. Right. And I've seen situations where and you see this on some of the other real estate boards a lot is somebody just post a lot. They just post, post, post like they have no life. They just post. They may know practically how to do it. But when it comes to execution, they're terrible. So my advice is, listen to what everybody on this call said. Go out and go through the reps. Go slow in the beginning. Get your foundation. I always like to say it's a lot like learning how to walk. We all remember how we, how we learned how to walk, right? No, you don't remember? Like we all fell down multiple times and we got back up. And today we walk around like it's no no big deal. We got it. OK, and that's the same way it is in this business. Go through the motions, practice, don't overthink it, trust in the system. And then what will happen is you will start to stand up more on your own. The next thing you know, you'll be running around. Next thing you know, you'll be running 5Ks. But also when somebody says something to you and gives you advice, if, if I were you, I would look at the person who's given me the advice and weigh it like somebody else who's doing this full time, you know, advice is worth its weight in gold. Somebody that's just posting on the Internet or they're they're two months older than you are in this business. Be careful. That's all I'm saying. Be careful who you take advice from as well. Yeah, and it's true. When I was out on that course the whole time, uh, I was frustrated and miserable. I kept saying to my son, I need to get I need to get lessons. I need to get lessons. You know, this is just, you know not fun. I need to get lessons. And so you're right. Like I need to go to that golf pro and shorten my learning curve, which bring us to our sponsor for the podcast this week, which is flight school. Wouldn't it be great to have Scott Todd as your instructor and take you up that mountain of land vesting quickly, safely, and efficiently 16 weeks. You start building passive income, learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with the Zen master, Mike Zano or the nightcap OG. Scott Bossman, and figure out, is this going to be the right path for you to start building passive income on a one-time sale, recurring income every single month, no renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. So getting back to that analogy with me on the golf course and my son right next to me doing the exact same thing, one of us is miserable, one of us is, is joyful, and it all comes down to beginner's mind. My son had no expectations. He's just happy to be there. He just had this beginner's mind. He knew the more he goes out there, he's going to get better. He didn't have any ego with it. There was no expectations. Where in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, if Scott Todd were here, he'd be laughing at me. I can't hit the ball. This is miserable. I'd be shooting in the 200s if this were a real, you know, thing. I mean, I kept having all these crazy thoughts. And I, and I literally was sabotaging myself instead of just going out there and being in nature and enjoying time, learning something that is hard to do and just having that beginner's mind. So I think what everybody said was, was great, but um, expectations, ego, they can sap the joy out of this business for you if you're new. And if you have the Matt Forbes approach where I'm just going to put my head down the next three years. And I'm just going to do what these guys tell me to do and see what happens. That's all he did. He had his ups, he had his downs. Three years later, he's he's kind of at that point. He's, he, he hit it, his goal. And um, he talks about it in the, in the group. Um, 
that's that's like what if i just did that what if i just went out there just like okay i'm gonna give myself three years i'm gonna get uh instruction and i'm gonna go out three times a week and i'm really gonna dedicate myself to just enjoying this game not a not a certain score not beating scott todd just the mental aspect of of learning something and improving over time it would have been a completely different experience right anyways i feel like i'm talking a lot tate what do you think no i think it's good i just i mean at the end of the day everybody you just gotta you gotta persevere it's not easy right it, it's it's hard it doesn't mean it's complicated but you gotta put in the work i think that's something that uh if somebody's telling you it's easy or it's fast it's quick you know take it with a grain of salt i really like what scott todd said about uh being careful who you listen to and you know I think the best people you can surround yourself with are the ones who are living the lifestyle that you want, right? If you could see yourself in their shoes, pay attention because they got it figured out to a certain degree. doesn't mean they know everything, but um, be careful who you take uh, your wisdom from. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what I love about the idea of golf? Because right now I can't stand golf. But you know what I love about the idea of it? You it's the it fact that on, that on any given shot, if I get lucky enough, I can hit the ball as well as any professional on any given shot. The only difference is I can't do it consistently, but there, but when you really hit the ball well, you can hit it just as well as any professional. I'll never be able to dunk a basketball ever, never. But on any given day, I could probably hit the ball as well as any pro could on, on a round. And that's an amazing feeling. And the same thing in business on any given day, you can close a deal just like us it's just can you do it consistently and that's that's the difference between somebody who's an amateur and someone who's a professional is doing it consistently taking the time and dedicating yourself to that craft or building that business which is what we're doing right we don't want to build another job for ourselves so i wouldn't call land investing necessarily a craft but in the beginning it, it is i mean eric what do you think yeah i mean to me, um, it just comes down to consistency, right? Consistent effort over time will equal a positive result. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to give the Zen master the last, the last word on mindset because he is the Zen master and I did bring up beginner's <laughs> mind. <laughs> well, I'll, how about I leave us with a quote from Elvis Presley? I know you all love my quotes. Sure. All right. All right. It's, it says rhythm it? is uh, what? Nothing. No, I'm not going to sing it. It says he says or he said uh, rhythm is something you either have or you don't have. But when you have it, you have it all over. So you know this business built. You know, I, I just think that's talking about how that relate to us is put a rhythm into your whole business, and the way to do that is to build it in a way that can be scaled. That's why you go into flight school because you build a model that has inside of that model has all of the elements to be scaled, right? And then in that model, you can build a rhythm. And so then your whole business develops a rhythm and you do that in a micro environment, you push a few deals through and then you just start growing, you just start growing, but you do it at a pace that works for you. Some people, um, they really want, to, maybe they don't like their job or they have some imminent, so they may push that rhythm faster than others, right? But uh, it's all personal, but you know, just do it in a way that's manageable in a way that uh, you know can be replicated day after day, not one time. Mailing a thousand letters one time, is not, putting out a hundred ads in a day. It's all, I guess, good, right? Uh, but if you can't do it consistently, what's the point? You know, like you said, if you go out and have one great shot, but then you never do that again, I mean, what's the point? You know, you want to develop a rhythm and then uh, allow yourself to get, um, you know, uh, just getting better and better at uh, what you're doing. So yeah, thanks Elvis. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgeek.com and www.scotttodd.net. Read and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.